Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and let's continue with the series on Python. So we have done with the basic thing, right? We have installed this office and we have done some operations and worked with variables. In this video, we'll work with a concept called as list. Now to understand this, what I will do is I will open my IDL as usual. What I want to do here is we want to work with list, right? Now what is list? Now let's imagine you have different values and let's say you have numbers and you have strings. Now if you want to group them together, now if you have worked on arrays in any other language, you know, C, C++, or Java, we have the same or similar stuff in here, which is a list. Now, how do we use list? It's very simple actually. Uh, let's say I have some nums, okay? So we have this variable called nums equal to, and now we can assign the values. And instead of assigning one value, we can assign multiple values. Now there's a question, how will I assign multiple values? So let's say 25, 12. Now in this case, we need to use a special symbol or special character, which is called square bracket. So we have to use square brackets here. And in this square bracket, you have to mention the values. Okay, now which one? Uh, any value doesn't matter. So I will say 25, 12, uh, maybe six, uh, 36, maybe 95, 14. So we, I got these values. Now these are the list of values which I have here. Now you might be thinking, can we only have similar type of data? Example, all these things are numbers, right? Well, let's try that as well. So I will, I will say enter here. Can I print it? We can. So simply type nums and you got the value. You can see we got 25, 12, 36, 95 and 14. That's so simple. Now, if you remember in the last session, we have also talked about string and we said, okay, string is a collection of characters and we can pick up individual character with the help of uh, uh, index value, right? Can we do it here? And the answer is yes. Example, let's say I want to pick up the first value, which is 25 in this case. You know the answer, right? So we simply have to say nums and zero and uh, oh, it worked. You can see we got 25. Uh, let's say I want to fetch the last value, which is nums of it should be five, right? So, oh, four, because the value, the size of the list is, is five. Typos, doesn't matter. So if I say enter, you can see we got 14. So it's working, we got 14 as well. Okay, so we got 25, we got 14, so first and last is working. In fact, not just first and last, you can pick up any value, right? What if you want to print something in between and then till the end? Now, if you remember in string as also, we have done that. So example, I want to print third element, fourth and fifth. So third and then to the end. So of course we can do that. We can start with two, which is third element and we can give a colon and there's no end limit, right? So if I say enter, you got the third element, fourth and fifth. Now, what do you think? Can we use negative numbers the way we have done before? You know, the, uh, the index number as negative one, minus one, minus two, minus three. Yes, it works here as well. So we can say nums of, so if you want to pick up that 14, which, which is at the end, uh, you are right, we have to use minus one and it works. If you want to fetch the first element, we have to say minus five, right? That's what we have done before. So yes, we can use negative range as well. Okay, how about having a string or uh, another array here or another list here, we'll say nums, uh, we'll say names and names of, so what names? So I can have any names here, right? I can have Naveen, I can have uh, Kiran, and I can have, let's say, John. So we got these three names here, right? And the moment I say enter, you can see we also have a list of string. And if I print names, you got the names there. Okay, so now if you can see one array, which is numbers, we have second array, which is names, which is of string. We can create different list of different types. Now, can I create a list of different types? I mean, one list of different types. Uh, I will simply call it as values equal to, and I want to have any type of value here. Example, the first one I would say is 9.5, which is a float value. Then I want to go for a string. I will go with my name. And then let's say another, another one, which is 25, which is a number, right? So we have a float number, we have a string and an integer number. If I say enter, it works, okay? So we can have a list with different type of data. And that's the beauty about list, you know, you can have different data. And that's not the case with other languages, right? In C, C++, Java, what we do is, when we create an array, it has to be of same type. Yes, in Java, we have the object array, but okay, let's not, let's not discuss that here. If you're only thinking about Python, this is what we have. So we have a list where you can have different types. Can we have two lists working together? I mean, something like this. I want to get another list here. Mill is equal to uh, miscellaneous things. Uh, so I will say mill is equal to, I want to have a list of list. Uh, can we do that? Let's try. So I want to have this list which will have nums and which will also have names. So a mill will have names and nums and names. Enter, there's no error, okay? I will say mill. Okay, you can see we got a list and inside that list we have two different lists. One is of numbers and one is of uh, string. Okay, that works. So the amazing thing about list is we can perform certain operations because it has certain methods to use, right? Or you can call them functions. Now, how do we know that? So what I will do is, 
I will send nums dot. The moment you send nums dot, of course we have not got, oh, we got the pop-up there, can you see that? Now you can see we got append, we got clear, we got copy, count, extend, index. We can use all these functions, let's try. Now the, um, the another thing about list is it is mutable. Oh, what is that? Mutable simply means you can change the values and we can do that here nums dot append i want to append what i want to append let's say i want to append 45 and now if i say nums or you can see we got 25 12 and then at the end we got 45 so we can append it uh, what else we have so if i so if if the pop-up is not coming instantly you can simply say control space okay so we got clear as well so clear will clear the entire uh, list for you try it out you know once you are watching this video try it on your machine different uh, different operations so we have inserted right or we can also use insert now difference between append and insert in append it will append at the end in insert it will it will add in between let's try so in insert what we do is we specify the index value as well so i can say index value 2 comma i want to specify there let's say any value let's say it's 77 i will say enter and now if i print nums you can see we got 77 at index number two now what if you want to remove the element even that is possible you can say nums dot there's a method called as remove and in remove you can pass the element which you want to delete i will say i want to delete 14 uh, enter and if i say nums you can see in the list we don't have 14 now what if you want to use index number Oh, we have not done that, right? Because when you pass 14, that's a value. So if you want to delete based on the index number, even that is simple, you just need to use a method of a pop. So you have to say nums.pop. Inside this pop, you just pass the index number. Which one, which I want to delete, let's say I want to delete 12. So in this case, I will pass one. And you can see we got 12 out. How do I verify? If I say nums, you can see we don't have 12 now. Okay, in fact, we can also use pop without an index value. What happens when you, when you use pop without index value? Now, if you have learned data structures before, we have a concept of stack, which is last in, first out, which simply means we have these two methods there, which is push and pop. So push is pushing the elements in the stack. Pop is removing the element. And when you say pop, it will remove the last element, which is added. So in this case, the last element, which is added is 45, which is at the last. I will say enter, you can see we got 45. So if you don't specify the index value, you got the last element. Uh, so you can use this when you implement stack in data structures, yeah. Okay, so we can use remove, we can use pop. In fact, we have another method, you know, if you want to delete multiple values, not one, multiple values, how will you do that? So in this case, you will use del. So del is a, again a command, and then you have to pass the name of the list, which is nums, and in the array, you have to specify the index value from where you have to start. I want to start from, let's say, two, and then I want to end it. I want to delete all the remaining elements, you know, so I will say enter. And if I verify now, you can see we got only two values, the zeroth and first, because from two, everything is deleted. So that's how you can work with nums. Now, time let me just add some values there. Oh, how to, how to add multiple values now? Because I want to add multiple values, right? Not one. In that case, you can use another method which is called as extend. Again, you need to read documentation for this. So there's one question from everyone, you know, from where to learn or from where to read. Of course, you're watching this video, but reading is also important, right? What if I say Python has this amazing documentation online? So you just need to go to online and search for Python docs. You will get uh, the documents. In fact, in the next video, we are going to talk about how to use the help command, which is very useful, actually. So we'll see that. So if you want to add multiple values, just type nums.extend and in the bracket, specify multiple values if you want. Example, I want to add 29, comma, 12 again, 14, 36. I want to add these four values. Simply say enter, we, we have done a mistake. Okay, I guess we have we have to give a square bracket as well. Oh, so that was a mistake. We have to put that value in square bracket, my bad. And if I say nums, you can see we got the value. So we got a list now. Now with this list, we can perform some inbuilt functions. You know, we in Python, we have this inbuilt functions. Now, how do I know that which inbuilt function we have min, we have max, uh, we can find sum. Uh, so we have those methods here. So let's try. So can we use inbuilt, inbuilt functions? Uh, let's try. So I will say min. I want to find the minimum element. So I would say min of the collection, with, uh, the list, which is nums. And if I say enter, you can see we got 12. 12 is the minimum value. The same thing you can do with max. In max, you can pass nums. You got 77. And uh, we can also say sum. Find the sum of all the values and it's 193, right? So normally you do, you do all those things by yourself, right? If you, are, if you are doing programming, this is one thing you have to do by yourself using some loop and those concepts. But Python says, hey, don't worry, I have some methods for you. In fact, uh, I forgot to mention one more thing. In nums, we have one more method which is called a sort. So when you say sort and if I say nums, you can see we got all the values in sorted format. So yes, list is amazing. It provides you so many features, right? So that's about list we have. So now we know we 
they can have multiple values in the list and that they, those those things can be of different format and if you want to access any of this element you have to use index values uh, it's mutable so you can change the values you can add values you can remove values and you can you can use certain methods like extend uh, sort to do or to do exciting things and that's it that's about list i hope you're enjoying this series uh, let me know in the comment section and if you're liking this video click on the thumbs up button there and thank you so much for watching everyone bye, -bye.